A tradition that started back in 2018 begins its final campaign tonight in 2021. The European Finals, a tournament that has brought forth so many incredibly intense matches and has brought forth the best of the best from Europe, United States, everyone all together. Comfy Len, the defending Natasha heavyweight and Sasha heavyweight champion, defends his European title, which started an incredible run in 2020 to lead him to the championship of the National Heavy Boxing League. But other boxers are looking to claim that same glory that Comfy Len achieved only a year ago. Oracle collides with Setuplet, one of the longest tenured heavy boxers in the NHBL. Bright Boy, famous noodle arms boy from South America, collides with Raid Baron, another prominent member in the European heavy boxing community. And Baxter, who's made a name for himself going from staff member to heavy boxer in the playoffs and now consistently performing on the biggest stage. Four boxers will escape out of the eight tonight to head to the quarterfinals next week but only one at the end of January can become the fourth Natasha heavyweight champion. Who will rise and who will fall tonight? It all comes down to this. The NHBL European Finals kicks off next. And welcome everybody from London, England on the National League Boxing League's European server for the NHBL European Finals kickoffs and what a great set of four matches we have for you today another four continuing tomorrow here in London the gentleman's fedora alongside Clayface Brandflakes is out today so I'll, I'm running everything from behind the camera but Clayface and I are here in the spectator team for this team workers 2 extravaganza and we're ready to bring you every bit of the action here from London we start off with Comfy Len and facing off against Katia. It was going to be Comfy Len and Oni, but through the backup roster situation, Katia, who has not qualified for the playoffs yet, is looking to make a statement here against Comfy Len as he defends his Natasha Heavyweight Championship. Follow that between Oracle and Setup Let Oracle made a name for himself by qualifying for the playoffs in the Boxing Day Classic in season nine back in 2019 and set up lit one of the longer one of the longer tenured heavy boxers in the national heavy boxing league looks to get farther than the semifinals and potentially bring home his first tournament championship but he's got a tough task ahead of him in the kickoffs bright boy everyone knows the peruvian from down in south america who has been a huge testament to noodle arms as all the heavy boxers call him around the scene and tonight's matchup, make sure I get the number right here. He has a ping of 191 here in London. So maybe more new, maybe his arms are more like pool noodles or even longer, depending on how he collides against Raid Baron, who has such an advantage with Raid Baron as he has been in the European circuit for such a long time in the National Heavy Boxing League. And he's got a tough task ahead of him in Bright Boy. In the match that was originally set to be a bitter rivalry between Baxter and Space Vegemite. Vegemite is out. Penguineer is in, who signed up for several tournaments this year for the NHBL and is in with Space Vegemite dropping out. Clayface, how are things down under? I know you're I know you were incredibly happy that we got matched up together in the kickoff the kickoffs in the broadcast booth, but uh How's everything down, down under as we get set for the European final? You know, it's uh, it's been a rough year for, for for the the entire world, and it's been a it's been a rough year for everybody. And um, you know, it wouldn't be but it it would not be a great start to the year for the NHBL if we didn't have these European finals. There is something in the air with these European finals fed. Every year that it takes place, they have they have presented us with some of the greatest matches we have ever seen. And personally I'm just I'm just happy to be here once again in the commentary booth being commentating the EU finals kick EU finals kickoffs. 
and what better matches to be matched up with than seeing Comfy Len defend as the Taka <coughs> Heavyweight Championship. We saw how incredible of a run that was last year in the opponents he faced, culminating in his rematch with Space of Edgemite, which everyone was hoping we would see that in the semifinals, but of course that's not going to happen this year. But for Comfy Len, he's had a... He's had lack of a better word, he's had a terrible streak in the major circuits coming into tonight. I mean, a loss in the first round in every tournament that he's participated in. But the, now that he's on his home turf in London, the advantage has got to be in his court to defend in the Tasha Heavyweight Championship. You know, it's an interesting case with with with, with Comfy Len. He's, he's taking on... Uh, he's taking on Katia tonight. These two actually met... In the previous tournament, Comfy Lin, I believe, got the win and moved on to the second round in the previous tournament. I believe that was the Boxing Day Classic. Comfy Lin is in his home turf, though. This is in the the, the London server. He is based in in the United Kingdom. He is competing with a ping of 16. So he, he literally is on home turf advantage, and he is... This is where Fed. This is where he made a name for himself. Because essentially, the run he had last year was unbelievable. I mean, the the run he had, the the close matches, the encounters, comfy Len had. It took you. It took everybody for an absolute roller coaster watching him compete. But you are essentially right. This is his home turf. I think he's got this in the bag. And the big tidbit as well, he did make it to the second round to qualify for the playoffs, even though he lost to a fluffy teddy bear. But you know who he beat in that first round? Katia. Katia. So I know. He beat him 2-0. Yeah. So that Comfy Len has that advantage. It's a ping of 16 for Comfy Len. And right now, 148 for Katia. So the ma the rematch, it could be another, sl another sweep, but I'm sure Katia in the last two weeks has been preparing ever so much to get this rematch if he had got assuming that he would get in from the backups. Let's look ahead to set up lit. He hasn't made it past the, the semifinals of any tournament he's participated in, but that's mostly in fact of the top tier boxers that he's faced off against. What does set up lit have to do uh, to beat Oracle and then get past either Spotten or El Comandante who face off tomorrow? Well, well, Fed, uh, uh, let me tell you something. Set up lit has the joint second most experience with Spop Spotten. Both of them are behind. Obviously, Metro has having the most experience coming into this tournament. But Spotten and Set up lit have been boxing, dating back since season four. So they have had experience in season four, and uh, Set up lit has the experience to win matches and make it to the semis I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the nerves get to him or he just kind of he can't figure it out but he's once again he's you know he's back he's back on European turf he's got 40 ping based uh, I believe he's connecting from I think it's Helsinki Finland I will be corrected shortly I'm sure but um he uh no nah, he's been around since season four fed look if I have to say anything I I've seen it all. It's 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 the experience that is going to be the biggest uh, the biggest uh, kind of push that kind of motivates him to move to move in closer to the final as he possibly can. He has a tough road to get there, as you mentioned. If he does beat Oracle tonight, he will take on either Spotten or El Camarante in the divisional so quite difficult uh run here for, for a setup lit and setup lit's only other appearance in season 10 was against random puncher where he lost two to zero and random puncher went on to claim third place and qualify for the playoffs in that tournament let's talk about bright boy everyone knows the nickname of noodle arms that's given to him but now that he's got a 200 ping di difference with with the competitors going into the circuit i mean it's no joke going against Raid Baron as he's put on some uh, some good performances in the European finals, but against uh, against the Peruvian who has been known as Noodle Arms, this is going to be one of the more interesting matches going into this into the first round. Well, let me tell you something. They are setting those Peruvian fireworks up tonight. The fireworks are back tonight. The Peru the, the man from Peru, black boy, but. As he said, tough task tonight. Uh, 200 ping. That is the biggest ping 
in this entire tournament, connecting from South America all the way across the, Atlant the Atlantic. I, he's taking on Raid Baron. Now, Raid Baron from France, as you just mentioned, Fedora, he's actually competed in the, uh, I believe it was the Collision of Continents. He was representing Team Europe in that. L looked actually quite good in the team base stuff. He kind of, he was very excited to be to be involved in that, and it's it's great to see him back back here tonight. Started out in started out in fight night, and he's uh, he's been competing in the major circuit, I believe, since season season eight. It's it's going to be a close one, I think. Though ping ping could play a huge factor here for uh, for whoever wins. Raid Baron, of course, not make this is his season ten debut, but for Bright Boy, it's been the complete opposite. Second place in the backyard brawl. Claiming the championship in the clash and only losing in the quarterfinals to Russian Bear in the Boxing Day Classic, who went on to win the Boxing Day Classic. And the last matchup we got tonight between Baxter and Penguinier. You know, Penguinier, he's been on the other brackets throughout the throughout season ten. If you just did he qualify? Uh, Penguinier is not qualified for oh. the playoffs just yet. Uh, that was in part to he lost to Bright Boy three to one in the first round of the quarterfinals, but beat Oni. Two to one in the first round oh, of that tournament, and in the backyard backyard brawl, I believe yeah, Penguinier was not signed up for that. He he only signed up for the Clash and the European Finals. I think he has two other tournaments that he's on the bracket right now for. But you know, Baxter was preparing to face off against somebody who trash talked him for not winning a major circuit as compared to uh, as compared to winning the Fight Night Championships and. The Fight Night Championships, and they're right, they're, they're on par with the major circuits because a lot of the champions in the majors win in Fight Night majors. So for Space for Space Vegemite to have all that trash talk and all that hype going in and then to drop out last second, it's sad. But Baxter has been preparing to face off against Space Vegemite. How does he adjust to face off against Penguinier in the first round? Well, he... Well, well, he... He's essentially fighting someone complete, completely different. Space, Space Vegemite, Penguinia are much, are much different beasts. Uh, Space Vegemite was going to be connecting in on about 20 ping himself. He's taking on Penguinia, who I don't even know is with a ping of 79, which is very good for someone connecting in for, from from the United States compared to Baxter's 107. It's quite, it's quite a strange turn of events for, for Baxter. He's got himself still a handful. I think it's still still going to be tough. I don't know what it is. I just think Peng Heng with, 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 with the Ping being at a at a decent rate. And he has experience, you know, but Bax as well. Bax has uh, been training every week, every day. If this is the time for, for, for Bax to to you know, pull off some wins in in this tournament, it's it, and pull off a win in the major circuit could very well be here. Uh, I think the experience that back the uh, that backs has and the motivation that he has to actually win a tournament could very well see him go to potentially even the, the semifinals or even the the final fed. We saw that come very close in the last few years with the Magic Marksman getting to the semifinals, with you know, with Spotten last year getting to the semifinals, and boxers getting so close to that Natasha Heavyweight Championship. So it shows how on par and how Ping does not always make, become the determining factor in matches. But for Baxter, he's also got playoffs, uh, playoff implications he's trying to qualify for. Only one spot for grabs in... Uh, whoever wins the Natasha Heavyweight Championship or gets there if their competitor is already previously qualified. So it's this tournament just makes it even more intense. And, of course, the unusual and the metal going all to that. Any final thoughts before, as the warm-up rounds are about to start, any final thoughts as we get into the European final? You know, this is just a great time to to be watching heavy boxing. These... There's something about the European finals, and there's something about the matches that that these boxes bring. It's almost like a a form of just they really want to win this. It's you know they, we saw that last year, and you know we've seen it every year in the European finals, and we see it in every tournament. It's the boxes' dedication in the in the European finals and putting on a show for everyone watching the Twitch stream. You guys, you guys are in for a real treat tonight. 
as you can see with Comfy Len winning that first matchup. And you talk about the dedication. It's a huge part, in fact, of Fight Night. Even the European Fight Night scene before that got, uh, before that got discontinued was, uh, was prominent on, uh, under the leadership of Ridge and the referee Spo uh, Spogo here. They, they helped lead that, uh, lead that European circuit to, uh, the, to great heights when both Ridge and Spogo were working together on it. And that's why the European finals are sti still exist today. And it's, it's a sign, especially for Comfy Len, his dedication, even to lose in the first round of every tournament going up to the Boxing Classic, he kept boxing, he kept going at it, and he kept acknowledging, yeah, I know one that I'm not doing too well, I know that I'm in a slump right now, and he didn't make any excuses, he continued to work and work and work, and of course he qualified for the playoffs and relegation, but he's going to show here at the Natasha Heavyweight Championship Tournament that he's not messing around. He wants to show that just because of regulation, I qual I'm going to qualify for the playoffs because of winning the Natasha Heavyweight Championship. Well, well, the first match here, essentially, we're, we're kicking it off where it, all, where it all finished last season with Comfy Len, the reigning champion, taking on Katia. And you are 100% right. 100% right that the fact that the that the dedica dedication Comfy Len has to come back here and to still compete after... Quite a few first round exits. It just shows you, it just shows you the effort he wants to. He wants to succeed. He wants to still be the best. And the European finals are underway for the National Heavy Boxing League as Comfy Len tries to get the punches in on Katia, and Katia being a little more conservative around the NHBL logo tries to get a punch in, but Comfy Len deals it evenly back. Katia had the advantage there, but couldn't hold on to it as Comfy Len takes the first round. It's a slow start for um, Katia, pushing directly out of the corner. Was very, it was she was he was quite slow to push out of the corner there. And Comfy Len, as soon as the bell rang, w wanted to take take center control of the ring. I think Comfy Len, one of his best advantages is he always gains center control and no, and with his ping of forty. Oh, sorry, with his ping of 17, he knows when the first punch is going to arrive because he's already in the center. He just backs up, bang, lands the first shot. Uh, already advantage. Katia trying to prevent a 2-0 sweep like in the Boxing Day Classic as Comfy Len deals the first punch and Comfy Len getting a little bit more aggressive on the movement as he tries to get another punch in and successfully does. Comfy Len got him on the ropes Whoa. and a spin move to send Comfy Len to the quarterfinals next week. Comfy Len with that spin move, moved out the way, dodged that right uh, cross coming in from Katia, and he's moving on to the quarterfinals. The defending champion still defending Fedora. Unbelievable. Oracle and Setup Lit, a matchup that, between two heavy boxers who are not rookies in Season 10, but they have competed in previous seasons. Setup Lit more so than Oracle. But Setuplet has a lot to prove here because since season four, Setuplet has not gotten past the semifinals, and that's in part to being faced off in the same side of the bracket as White Russian Bear and prominent boxers like that. So it's for Setuplet, this is one of these situations where the European finals being on level playing ground, there's a lot that Setuplet has to prove here, and he hasn't quite done that yet. In the four turn in the three previous European finals he's participated in. Well, well, setuplet has. You have to keep in mind when you talk about setuplet, he's only faced the best of the best, Fedora, and he's lost to the best of the best. He's beaten many talented boxers, but he's lost to the best. I think he lost to Russian Bear. He's lost to Spotten. He's lost to every pretty much every. American boxer who's ever won a, a tournament, he's 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 fought and he's either won or lost. And it, when it comes to the European finals, his performances have been okay. He's, I think he got to the quarterfinals a couple seasons ago in the European finals. He, he's consistently been a boxer who has showed up ready, ready to go and competed and has accepted the outcome no matter what happens. But that's his big, his his biggest strength is that he's seen everything. He knows what to expect. He's taking on Oracle, who's from, I believe he's from 
Italy, and he's connecting here tonight to take on Setup Lit. It's a big task for Setup Lit, but there's nothing. There's nothing Setup Lit hasn't done or hasn't seen already in his career. Fed. He's faced off against a lot of top tier boxers. That's been a big reason why he hasn't gotten to the past the semifinals uh, and more so the quarterfinals in recent years. And losing 2-0 to a random puncher in the Crits Cast Clash for season ten. That's a big part. A big part of why he's trying to get back to the top. As we have another warm up round here, it looks like. And you know, you know. Interesting fact about uh, about uh, setup lit. He's always had the same loadout. He's always just worn the standard Mainco cap. Ever since, I think, even Season 4, yep. he was just wearing the same Mainco cap. I remember we when we had the Germany International Series, we had it on a post. I just, we just wanted a Mainco cap on. He's had that Mainco cap on since he first started in this league. It's, it brings back a lot of memories. Oracle and Skeldo Spook are set to collide here in the first round. As the first punch is dealt by Setup Lit, Oracle deals it back as Shotgun Setup Blaster, Lit trying to get... There. Yep, there was a penalty. As Setup Lit tries to get the punches in, or, Oracle a little bit on the ropes. And Oracle, it's right now a round one win, but we have to get a penalty call. Red Boxer has, in the beginning of the round, has crouched... And uh, that will be a warning for now, but if he crouches again, it will be a point awarded to his opponent. So reset after the crouching penalty by Oracle. We'll see if Setup Lit can take advantage of that here. As Oracle, Ooh, a little bit more there. reserved, a little bit of lag and reserve in his movement as Setup Lit tries to get the punches in and just missing and whiffing in the air as Oracle takes the first round regardless of penalty, took advantage even when it looked like he was having some connection issues. Massive lag spike from Setup Lit. I don't know if that was just on my side, but there was a big lag spike that came in from Setup Lit that literally bounced him from rope to rope, uh, and they then they met they met in the center. It's almost like a 50 ping lag spike, but nonetheless, oh, cool stay composed there, and he uh, took him out. Wow. Setup Lit down 1-0 has to get a 2-0 sweep to get past the first round. Oracle minimal in his movements as Setup Lit gets the first punch in, dealed, dealt right back evenly. Another punch in as Setup Lit trying, he's staying on the ropes, tries to get the punch in, and Setup Lit oh. will tie it up. Wow, uh, both men were trading shots. Setup Lit actually had a one punch advantage, let that slip. But the thing is, he backed away because he predicted that. That Oracle was, was going to throw the second punch, and he did. So he threw that punch back at him. He connected first, and there you go. Got himself a win. Round three in the tiebreaker. One apiece for Oracle and setup lit. Which one goes to the quarterfinals and which one gets sent home early? As, bo as both of them get the first punch in evenly. Setup lit. Backing up. Getting good predictions here. Can he get it done? Both of them on the ropes. It's Ooh. the final punch and swing to miss oh. Oracle takes advantage. He's going to go 2-1 to the next round. What a fight. That was edge of your seat stuff. Setup lit. They were down to one punch apiece. And man, how about that? What a fight. Oh, 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 Oracle moving on to the next round. GG to both of them. That was fantastic. Fed, that is what the European Finals is capable of. There is a winning feeling with these matches. And these guys just these guys just put on a show right there. That was great. So now Bright Boy and Raid Baron collide. And everyone knows about Bright Boy at this point. I mean, he's, he's funny. He's highly skilled at what he does. He's won a tournament in season ten now, and very much on warm up rounds at two hundred ping. Unbelievable! Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> at two hundred ping. He's able to win one of those warm up rounds again. It shows how there's level playing field. A ping does not necessarily mean that someone's going to win a match, but it's it's just incredible to see what Bright Boy could do when he's far away from his connecting point. I mean, Bright Boy, the story just. Started when he was top four in the uh, season nine, season nine NHBL finals. 
first ever South American boxer to, to, to win a tournament, to win a, an NHBL Major League tournament. First boxer to make it to the top four in an NHBL Finals. He's really, he's kind of set the mark for the, uh, and set the bar for a, a, any other South American boxers who who compete in uh, heavy boxing. It's a bit, it's an amazing feat for for what Bright Boy has accomplished at this point, and his eyes, of course, are still set on the league championship going into June, as he's already qualified for the postseason. Raid Baron, not quite the story on that. He's been to the quarterfinals in the European finals. He's participated in a few other major circuits, and he's just trying to get past that hump. He he's not quite to the setup level yet. We're not getting past the semifinals, but he's sort of in this. Round, round of 16 quarterfinals Lupo where the boxers he's been, he's been faced off against have kept him from achieving true greatness started uh, started back on the fight night scene and he actually was a he was he was a regular participant in some of our off season events I've just mentioned he he did actually compete in the collision of continents this season representing team EU I think that that was on the the second day he was called in to compete in in the London server, and now he's back on the London server. It, it's a great feat that, that he's managed to come back here, but yeah, we'll see if he can pull it off tonight. Bright Boy more rush than usual. We'll see if that plays a factor as Raid Baron and Bright Boy collide here. Raid Baron a little bit conservative and gets the first punch in, evenly dealt back by Bright Boy. Raid Baron not relenting, and oh. Bright Boy gets the final punch. He knew that Raid Baron was coming, got it done. He's just trading punches in the center of the in the center of the ring. That is a wild ball there. Backyard ball stuff. That was in the center of the ring. No man showing fear. Uh, and Bright Boy just happened to get the final shot. 1-0 advantage for Bright Boy as Raid Baron tries to get over the center of the ring. Bright Boy. Doesn't get the first punch in, but deals it back evenly as Raid Baron is swinging the miss in the air, trying to get some stuff in against Bright Boy, and it's oh. a 2-0 sweep. Raid Baron wow. had some good punches in, couldn't get it done. Bright Boy is headed to the quarterfinals. Moves on to the quarterfinals. I, I believe that is the first ever South American to make it to the quarterfinals for a uh, an NHBL EU finals appearance. So, once again, another man uh, and another rare cord he is setting here and um yeah it's an, a wonderful achievement he he controlled raid baron it was a wall and raid baron was so close he was one punch away and just missed the last punch and fortunately th 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 that's what happens black boy moving on jackson penguinier are trying to get there as they will conclude the kickoffs tonight as you can see baxter who his European persona has been Bacqua from French, as Sins puts it. And he faces off against Penguinier. Both these heavy, bo both these heavy boxers, uh, to my knowledge, connecting from the United States. So they've got they've got a interesting set of circumstances from there. But as the warm-up rounds are set to go here, Baxter, this is one of the, this is another one of those boxers who. He finally got past the hump and got past the first round in the Battle Royale last season. And he's been holding pretty steady going into Season 10. He hasn't qualified for the playoffs yet, but he's been steady in trying to get over that hump and trying to get into the postseason. And, of course, only first place goes, it goes to the playoffs here in the European Finals, but he's got his eyes set on that unusual. Well, he is trying to qualify, but I mean, every boxer is lo looking at this unusual and looking at this medal. But you can't, you can't underestimate there are tasks at hand to get there. You have to get past this guy, and then you've got to get back in the ring and train a little bit. You have another match coming up next week. It, the, you know, the pressure, the stress, and the pressure is just really, really kicks in in the European finals, Fed. And Baxter lost 3-1 to one in the quarterfinals of the Clash against Spotten. He beat Luna Raven 2-1. to one. You look at the other tournaments, you look at the backyard brawl, and, of course, with the Warrior Spirit factor in that, he 
He got to the second round again, lost 3-2 to two to White Russia Mare, but beat Mr. Dizzy in his major circuit debut 2-0. And then in the Boxing Day Classic, Baxter went on they went on to they went on to the he lost in the round of 16 against Bright Boy. Look for a chance of revenge in that as they have their final warm-up round there. So Baxter has he's gotten to the quarterfinals in, twice in uh, twice in season 10. But I, he's still I believe to in qualify. season nine he made it to the semis in one of the uh, tournaments. That was in the uh, ba battle yeah. royale last year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, made, there you go. Made it to the semifinals and then t then took a loss, which uh, yeah. uh, which I mean again, it's one of the, it's one of those situations where again you look at season nine. He actually lost to Bright Boy again, four to two, and then Bright Boy went on to lose to Egyptian mm -hmm. Bagel. But it's again one of these situations where. The NHBL is very much a week, a, a tournament to tournament basis or week to week basis, including fight night. And beginning of Baxter versus Penguinier. Bax more aggressive going out from the gate, but Penguinier gets the first punch in. The Huar man is dealing it back, back and forth, and one zero. The aggression pays the off for Penguinier once he turned up the notch. Backed him, backed him into the corner, and bang, bang, bang. Every shot landed. That was. Brutality in the corner, and the thing about the 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 corner ropes, it pushes you forward a little bit. So it's actually a little bit of a dis, a little bit of a disadvantage. And it was simply Penguinier just teeing off on him. I uh, yeah, Penguinier looking strong here. You you have to keep in mind as well here for doors that Penguinier, even though connecting from the, the United States, has a ping of 76. So Fairly low. That was quite low for, for a person connecting in from the States there. Can Baxter tie it up or will Penguinier get the 2-0 sweep? Baxter gets the first punch and dealt evenly back as Penguinier is keeping the aggression on Baxter. Trying to keep it oh. up and it's a tie 1-1. One one. Wow. The second time we've seen a 1-1 one one tie here tonight. And Baxter knew what he had to do and he ties it up. He, he took center control. He moved Penguinier side to side. Penguinier was trying to connect, trying to back up a little bit, trying to be more defensive, but just just couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't really handle Bax's ping. I think there's a bit of lag going on in the ring. I think Bax is claiming he's got a bit of lag. I think it's uh, I think it's being resolved though. And a tiebreaker to determine who's going to the next round as both heavy boxers. Get the first punch dealt evenly. Baxter got it in. Baxter wailing him on. And he's got the advantage in Baxter. Down one to zero. Two to one. He heads to the quarterfinals. Heading to the quarterfinals is Baxter. And what a performance. What a great performance. Kept his cool. He will either face Raz Dazzler or Nikolai in the quarterfinals. That will be on tomorrow night, that match. Great performance for Bax. Is this the tournament where Bax makes it to the semis? Is this, the, is this the tournament where he gets to the semis, maybe even the actual grand final?